Imagine a world that's desolate, freezing, and dry. No cities, no campfires, only wind, dust, ice, and a human species slowly fading away. Around 930,000 years ago, something almost unthinkable happened. Humankind nearly went extinct. Not because of war, not because of a meteor, but because nature became too brutal to survive. Geneticists, after decoding DNA from more than 50 modern human populations, uncovered a shocking truth. At that time, the entire population of our ancestors had dropped to just 1,280 breeding individuals. Only 1,280 people, all of humanity, on the brink of vanishing forever. Scientists call this event a genetic bottleneck, a drastic prolonged collapse in population size. And this wasn't a short-lived dip. The event lasted over 117,000 years, long enough to erase 98.7% of ancestral genetic lineages. If you're alive today, it's because your ancestors were among those 1,280 who made it through. Even though our numbers have rebounded, the scars of that bottleneck are still carved deep into your DNA. A dramatic loss of genetic diversity, repeated mutations from genetic drift, and evidence of inbreeding from a time long forgotten. What does that mean? It means that if a harmful mutation existed in one of those 1,280 individuals, billions of people today might carry it. But on the flip side, if there were mutations that helped them survive the cold, hunger, or disease, then those strengths are also part of us now. The genetic bottleneck wasn't just a historical accident, it was the greatest survival test in human history, a turning point that decided who would evolve and who would disappear. And the strange, miraculous thing is, we passed. We are the descendants of those who did not give up, of those who endured 117,000 years of despair and still survived. The invisible killer behind the bottleneck. What could have merely wiped out all of our human ancestors? Not disease, not an asteroid, but something far more silent, the weather. Between 1.2 and 0.8 million years ago, Earth entered a period of extreme upheaval, scientists call the early to middle Pleistocene transition. And this wasn't just another climate shift. It was a massive reset by nature itself. The glacial cycles, once short and predictable, doubled in length, grew colder, and became wildly erratic. Global temperatures plunged, oceans receded, glaciers surged southward, rain disappeared, and the land cracked open under the weight of drought. Africa, the very cradle of humanity, was no longer a fertile grassland. Rainforests vanished, savannas spread, rivers dried to dust. Hunger, cold, and isolation tore apart the ecosystems that Homo erectus had once depended on. They had no shelters, no warm clothing, no way to store food for the dry seasons. And one by one, group by group, cut off, starving, freezing, desperate, humans began to vanish from the map of life. Animals didn't escape either. Many large species went extinct, turning hunting bands into wandering survivors with no game to pursue. What were once lush grasslands became wastelands of dust and thorns. The extinction didn't come overnight. It lasted tens of thousands of years, creeping across the land like a slow, merciless curse of ice. And Homo erectus, our close ancestor, could not overcome it. The genetic bottleneck, where humanity's breeding population dropped to just 1,280 individuals, was no coincidence. It may have been the direct consequence of this brutal ice age, because even with intelligence, humans were fragile in the face of a planet that no longer welcomed them. And in that harshest chapter of history, only the groups that could hide, migrate, share and adapt to the extreme survived. The bottleneck we carry in our DNA today may be nothing more than the residue of desperation, a last stand of life in a world that had stopped being home. The Ice Age didn't just freeze rivers, it shattered the way humans survived. They had once lived in forests, sheltered by shade, surrounded by fruit trees, 
drinking from cool mountain streams, but that world disappeared. In its place came scorched plains, cracked soil, and endless dry grasslands. No more trees to climb, no more places to hide. Humans were forced to change. They traded climbing for running, foraging for hunting. Waiting for rain became digging wells, harvesting dew, and chasing water across shifting landscapes. And that's when one of Homo erectus's strangest strengths kicked in. The ability to run long distances under the blazing sun. They weren't faster than gazelles, but they were more relentless than any animal alive, and they began to evolve. Their bodies grew leaner, their legs longer, their skin learned to sweat, creating a natural cooling system. While predators had to rest in the shade, humans could chase under. This new environment didn't just reshape humans, it transformed the entire animal kingdom. Forest-dwelling primates began to vanish. Grassland specialists, horses, antelopes, wild cattle took over. Homo erectus and later Homo heidelbergensis adapted quickly. They became more mobile, more cooperative, sharing water sources, migrating with the seasons, and tracking herds like true predators. They didn't build houses. They lived by the land. They befriended hardship and turned the burning savanna into their survival arena. The ruthless climate didn't destroy them. In a strange twist of fate, it forged them, and through them, it forged us. We do not come from peace. We are the outcome of relentless ecological trials, of the harshest tests nature ever gave. Ecological change didn't end humanity, it evolved us. The beginning of civilization. Amid the freezing cold that lasted for thousands of years, humans had no shelter. No cave was warm enough, no fur thick enough. And then, they created a tiny sun, right there on the ground, fire. At Wonderwork Cave in South Africa, where limestone is dusted with the weight of ages, archaeologists uncovered layers of ash, charred bone, and burnt wood dating back one million years. These are some of the earliest signs that humans had learned to control fire. They no longer feared the dark. They no longer shivered through the wind. Fire became a barrier against predators, a source of warmth for the tribe and, for the very first time, a way to cook food. Cooking didn't just soften meat. It freed up time and energy, accelerating the development of the brain, the most powerful tool humans would ever evolve. At the same time, stone itself was being upgraded. The Acheulean toolkit, once made of crude heavy rocks, became refined and precise. Hand axes, smaller, sharper pointed blades for gutting game, slicing tendons, skinning meat, even tools delicate enough to whittle wood, craft spears, and cut vines. Fire and stone, two of the most primal symbols in human history, may seem simple. But together, they marked a turning point unlike any other. With fire, Humans gathered around the glow, shared food, told stories, and perhaps, for the first time, invented language. With tools, they hunted better, carved smarter, and slowly, unknowingly, began forming roles, responsibilities, and early forms of organization. No one declared the start of civilization. But perhaps, in that moment, by the firelight, with stone in hand, Homo erectus laid the first brick. A spark, a stone, and from there, the entire world began to change. For decades, textbooks told a simple story, that Homo sapiens evolved from a single ancestral line, a straight, clear, elegant path. But now, science is beginning to rewrite that story. A wave of new genetic research reveals something astonishing. We didn't evolve from one lineage, but from two distinct ancestral groups, who lived side by side for hundreds of thousands of years, only merging around 300,000 years ago, right around the time Homo sapiens appeared in Africa. Scientists now label these two ancestral lineages, Lineage A, making up about 80% of modern human ancestry. This group went through a severe genetic bottleneck, where their population dropped below 1,300 individuals. Lineage B, only 20% of our genes come from here, but it carried variants linked to brain development, neural processing. 
and complex cognitive abilities. Both of these lineages left traces in your DNA, and the existence of these separate streams has forced scientists to rethink the traditional model of human evolution. No longer a tidy evolutionary tree, but instead a tangled genetic web, branching, splitting, weaving, and finally merging again, like rivers flowing around mountains before joining at the delta. These two lines may correspond to Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis, two ancient human species that coexisted during the harshest phases of the Pleistocene, one surviving through adaptation and resilience, the other evolving intelligence, creativity, and innovation. And then, in a moment lost to history, the two merged, not through war, but through life, through interbreeding, through genetic fusion that gave rise to something greater, Homo sapiens. No one knows exactly what happened in that merging, but it's possible that the blend of raw survival power and cognitive complexity created a spark, a decisive leap from human to modern human. We are not the product of a single pure lineage. We are a harmonic fusion of two long, complex, and unpredictable evolutionary stories. Not everyone agrees with the idea that humanity nearly went extinct 930,000 years ago. Some researchers reanalyzed the modern genome and found nothing. No clear traces of a bottleneck in non-African DNA. No uniform drop in genetic diversity. No global scar etched into our DNA. And so, they asked a critical question. If the event was that severe, why doesn't it appear everywhere? This question shook the foundation of a theory that many had come to believe. Could it be that only one small group of ancient humans experienced the bottleneck, while others, perhaps living in milder climates, continued evolving undisturbed? Or maybe humans were never one single population, but rather multiple evolutionary lineages living in parallel, occasionally meeting, interbreeding, then drifting apart again? If this is true, it doesn't just change how we view the past. It forces us to rewrite our origin story. Perhaps Homo sapiens wasn't nature's single grand invention, but the result of countless evolutionary experiments from many groups in many places across many different eras. And if so, then there was no single first human, no ancient Adam, no lone Eve, only countless groups of early humans, all evolving, all failing, all trying, until a few survived. In this debate, no one is entirely right, because the truth still lies buried in undiscovered bones, in undecoded genomes, in the silence of deep time. But one thing is absolutely certain. You, the one watching this video, are carrying within you millions of years of evolution, thousands of generations of survival, hundreds of ancestral lineages that clashed, merged, vanished, or endured. You are the result of Earth's greatest experiment, and you are the next chapter. This story isn't over, because humanity is still evolving, still changing, still writing its legacy, not just in books, but in every living cell inside you. Have you ever asked yourself, who am I in the endless timeline of humanity? You're not just a name, not just a citizen, not just another viewer on YouTube. You are a living legacy of millions of years of survival, the product of brains that imagined, hands that crafted, and hearts that never stopped seeking connection. The story of our ancestors doesn't lie still in the past. It lives in you, and it's still being written every single day. So if you ever feel small within history, remember, every view, every share, every comment you leave, helps continue the story of our species. Subscribe to the channel today, so you won't miss the next chapter in our journey to uncover the origins, the evolution, and the future of who we are. Turn on the notification bell, because the next video might be about the very genes flowing through you. Comment below, do you believe our ancestors came from a single origin, or from a vast, intertwined network? You are part of history. Now be part of the community. Subscribe now and join me as we explore the most epic story ever told, the story of humanity.